how do we study these stress cognitions and link them to cell aging? I'm going to talk about a very typical paradigm that we stress researchers use, which is called the Trier, uh, Trier Social Stress Test. It's a, it's a lab stressor. You bring people into the lab, you expose them to a standardized stressful situation right before, so they're told that they're going to need to do these tasks. And right before the interviewers come back and they have to perform, we ask them their appraisals. How, how anxious are you? How much control do you have? How well do you think you're going to do? How well were the evaluators rate you? Um, and so we've divided these up into challenge and threat appraisal. So we, we look at the emotions that are underlying these appraisals of threat, as well as the uncertainty about the situation, how stressful they expect it to be. These are just projections about their expectations at one moment in time. And then on the challenge scale, some people actually feel hopeful, confident, eager, excited, feel they're going to do well, and that the interviewers are going to rate them well. So we exposed caregivers and controls. In this study, they were dementia caregivers and matched controls. And we exposed them to the social stress test. We measured their appraisals beforehand, how they're anticipating it will go. We measure their evaluations right afterward as well in the same way. Turns out evaluations don't matter nearly as much as that projection, um, the anticipatory appraisal. And then after the stressor, we leave them sitting for about 30 minutes. We don't give them music. We don't give them paper. So they're just stuck with their mind and their thoughts. And then we measure how much they ruminated. This is depressive rumination, self-referential negative thoughts, some uh, feelings like, I feel worthless, I did terribly, I wasn't able to concentrate. Um, and we measure how frequent they had any of these thoughts. So, this rumination measure turns out to be very important. We also measure trait rumination in all our studies. And trait rumination is, is often much weaker than this kind of thin slice of online rumination that we can get. We measured their telomere length. And what we found was that the anticipatory threat appraisal was associated with telomere length above and beyond everything else we know that is already associated with telomere length, like perceived life stress. So covariating age, body mass index, education, whether they're a caregiver or not, um, whether they had high perceived stress, if they had high threat appraisals, their odds of having short telomere length was 2.8 higher. And all, this graph just demonstrates it cut, up, cut a different way. If we take the people with short telomere length in the sample, and we, you can see that their anticipatory threat appraisals are much higher than the people with long telomeres. So we're finding this cross-sectional association between threat at, to standardized stimuli and telomere length. We also know in the sample that caregivers have shorter telomere length. So that raises the question, are caregivers who are under more stress every day, do they have shorter telomeres because of this, this tendency to have more cognitive stress. And so we did this kind of statistical mediation model. And indeed, you what we find is that caregivers have exaggerated threat appraisals. Their brain, you know, you can imagine their amygdala activation is kind of chronically higher in response to the standardized stressor. They're interpreting it as more threatening. And once we put that threat in the model, we don't see a direct relationship at all between caregiving and shorter telomeres. So we're, tr we're trying to isolate it and say, well, that's this kind of thought stress that is this online tendency that's probably part of the active ingredient of what chronic stress is and why they're having shorter telomeres. You might think it'd be the opposite. Caregivers who deal with very big, um, light, serious life issues might not care about pleasing an audience and doing well on math. You might think they would have a, a much higher threshold for what stresses them out, but we actually found the opposite. And that fits you know, a lot of animal research where animals under chronic stress have a facilitated stress response. They're, it's more exaggerated. So then we measured rumination after the stressor. Now, trait rumination was not associated with telomere length in the study, but the tendency to ruminate more frequently in that 30 minutes after the stressor was associated with both shorter telomeres and damped down telomerase. So we think rumination is a really easy to measure, important form of chronic stress. So in sum, we found that anticipatory threat, thoughts about how bad th this is going to go, ruminating after the fact are related to shorter telomere length, 
and that this mediates chronic stress exposure. So someone might be under, have a chronic stressor in their life, but if they're not engaging in all this cognitive stress, then they're probably protected. And you might imagine they might have a lot more metacognition, they might be more mindful. We haven't, we're planning an intervention for caregivers, we haven't gotten there yet. So how does chronic stress get under the skin? I hear John's voice here, worrying about the future, ruminating about the past. 